Hi, this is Dennis Surgeon. I'd like to talk to you today about the basic principles of effective teams, and this is how we prepare teams to cooperate. What we're going to cover in this program is about how we prepare teams for cooperation by reviewing these basic principles of effective teams. They're very much about professional effectiveness and organizational effectiveness as well. What's in it for you and your organization is that you increase the trust and thereby reduce the fear in your organization and on your teams. This leads to improved outcomes and will help you understand why these principles are so important. We'd like to expose you to these several ideas of effectiveness and these are basic principles that we'll review in detail. The first item is to focus on the situation, issue, or behavior, not on the personalities. And the principle here is to take a big picture, broad perspective of the situations we're in as a team. We try to maintain an objective outlook focused on the evidence and consider other people's points of view about the situation. Why this helps is that fixing blame on someone does not fix the problem. We need to understand what caused the problem, not who. We can solve problems more effectively with better decision making and it builds trust and openness among the team. Maintaining constructive communications is also an important principle. We need to encourage team members to express their ideas without criticism from their teammates. We need to listen closely to what they say, ask open-ended questions so that we understand, and we want to encourage team members to expand their knowledge, their skills, and their abilities. And why this helps is productive dialogue without fear helps team members express their ideas Acceptance and approval will stimulate more team contributions and showing respect and recognition in our language with team members builds effectiveness of the team. Maintaining constructive relationships is also important. We need to use every interaction as an opportunity to build relationships and we need to acknowledge our problems openly and honestly as they arise. We need to share information and knowledge this is a huge benefit in that it builds trust, it supports teamwork towards a shared aim, a shared purpose and goals, and it builds stronger relationships between team members. The principle of taking initiative to act and make better results is pretty simple. We ask everybody to look at problems as opportunities for improvement. We approach every problem with the PDSA cycle of learning and improvement, and we stay focused on the future and plan ahead. Why this helps is it helps us stay alert to the evidence of changes and help us focus on our team. We control our team's work to create evidence of improvement, and we increase the team's chances for success as well as satisfaction of its members. Showing leadership discipline in our example also helps us when we show up to the meetings on time, when we follow up and follow through on our commitments. We need to all acknowledge that we make mistakes and openly admit them. We need to encourage new theories by testing them with PDSA cycles. Why this helps is actively keeping our commitments and admitting our mistakes and being receptive to new ideas and new evidence influences others on the team. Leaders can demonstrate the behavior that others will follow and it builds trust as well as stops demotivating people who are already motivated. Keeping focus on the aim and purpose is a principle that can help shape every discussion and every decision. The purpose of an organization is a priority of future value that the organization needs to deliver. It's the what that we're trying to accomplish that adds value. It often describes when that value will be delivered and it's created by the team who wants to add that value. And in essence, it helps keep the dialogue and action focused on the why the team exists. It's used to prioritize all team discussion, decisions, and action items. We mentioned before how important consensus is. 
It means I can live with it. It also means that we, the team, have decided on a path to go forward. We use it to create the aim, define goals and roles and interpersonal relationships and processes in the team. We'll refer you to the get a grip method that's discussed in another video. This idea of consensus, though, does not mean that everyone agrees on all the details. It helps build trust in team decisions and actions when we can make decisions together. It stops lengthy discussions and log jams, and it helps to move towards the team aim. When we manage our time as a team, we give every issue time in the purpose, agenda, and limit, and the PAL can be our best friend along with the parking lot. We encourage team preparation for progress to show up on time ready to work on the agenda that we send out ahead of time. This helps because preparing a PAL and sharing it with a team makes better time usage and sending it before the meetings allows the team to prepare for the purpose and issues that are outside the agenda and purpose don't get lots of discussion. We just send them into the parking lot. The confidentiality of our learning is critical too because we need to build trust and reduce fear in the team as well as the broader organization. It reduces defensiveness and reduces tampering by outside parties if we keep confidential information about team members, team discussions, and organizations inside the team. There should be no recording or repeating of who said what in notes, minutes, or gossip. We want to keep a record of decisions and action items, but that's it. The last basic principle I'd like to talk about is the principle that we are smarter than any one of us. There is no one smart enough to know everything that an effective team knows, and team members who learn to think together productively bring multiple perspectives and a clear view of the problems they need to solve. Clear definition of the problems to solve leads to better decisions and better solutions and action. It's important for us to think about gathering the evidence of improvement as we develop better results. Again, the basic principles of effectiveness have not changed. We want you to think about how useful all of these principles can be, not only for teamwork, but also for your work as an individual professional, as part of a larger organization. Thank you. You've got my phone number, my email. I'd be happy to entertain any questions you might have or if you need help with any of these concepts. Thank you.